Okay, Motorheads, thank you for clicking on House Call with Doc Love on Race22.com, episode number 10. Today I'll be connecting with Jonathan Findlay from Bristow, Virginia, driver of the Lee Falk Racing and Development number 4 Chevrolet on the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Racing Tour. Jonathan began his racing career at Old Dominion Raceway, competing in the Bandolero cars, then bypassed Legend cars, and jumped into a mini stock car for one race, then straight to late model stock cars at the young age of 14. Jonathan, why the big jump from Bandos to late model stock cars? When we watched the Legend cars up there, they were, they were a little fast, I'm not going to lie. You know, kind of like Southern National and places like that where... In my opinion, they don't really belong on those kind of big tracks, but, you know, can't really help that. Now, that decision become real quick from my mom and my grandfather because they told me that they that I was not driving one of those cars, and that was that. So I had the decision to wait until I thought I was ready or just go in, like you said, go into a late mall stock. And that's what we chose to do. And when they said they didn't want you to drive it on a track like that, was that maybe a, a safety factor? Is that kind of what, what they were saying? It was because we watched, we watched way too many wrecks up there of just incidences where I'll be quite honest with you that we're surprised that people even lived Wow. That's how bad those accidents got. It was more along the lines of speed and someone spun out. And, I mean, there's, you know, there was no, not enough time to slow down. It, it, you know, just it, it was a melee from there on. Okay. But other than that. Drove a, a mini stock, uh, one race. How did that go? <laughs> that was. That was fun. <laughs> we, uh, and, and that was at was the last my, race at the Old Dominion race, uh, racetrack, correct? Yes, sir. The very last race last night, you know, and the mini stocks were actually the last cars to run. And we only, I only practiced the car twice prior to that. And everyone and you know everyone in my family everyone that was around us and racing thought i was ready to do it so that's what we did um we were fast with some practice by a long shot all day and then it just you know we had no points had to start dead last on the field out of 16 cars in a 25 lap race and i think it only took me maybe 15 laps to get all the way to the lead and Ended up winning the race. So wow, that 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 was that was that, and they didn't think I needed to do that anymore, and just jumped to late models. There you go. Ain't no ain't no sense messing around with everything else. Jump right in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We're hanging out in the Race Twenty Two Studios here in Winston Salem on this beautiful weekend. Uh, getting ready for next weekend's return of racing for the Solid Rock Carriers Tour uh, at the Ace Speedway. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, we're joined by Jonathan Finley in, coming up in his second full season. Uh, Jonathan's out of Bristow, Virginia, driving this year for the Lee Falk Racing and Development number 4. We definitely want to talk about that here in a little bit. So uh, there's a little bit of a gap in horsepower when you're talking about uh, – the Bandoleros, the Legend cars, maybe to a little bit of gap of horsepower between that and a mini stock. Now, there's a huge gap in horsepower from a mini stock to a late model. So, let's talk about the jump from a mini stock to a late model. For the last six or seven years, been a family operation racing at Southern National Motorsports Park uh, in late models. A four-hour drive for you to go racing there with all the ra uh, tracks around you that had closed while you were racing, cutting your teeth in late models. Um, talk about that decision, though, in the beginning uh, to start your family uh, racing, Jonathan. Talk about that the family meeting that got you started in late model stock car racing. And, like I said, it wasn't, much, you know, it wasn't much of a meeting. It was a simple fact of they kept me in bandos until I was 14 because they did not want me to run a Legends car. And I, you know, I already 
pretty much knew that that's where we were going down that road. And, you know, like, you know, it, my mom, my grandfather, nobody wanted me to be a legend just because how the dangers they were up from where we were and run them at all big tracks. Now, with that being said, they didn't want to take me to any of the small tracks and run them because that would just turn into a money pit because we've seen that firsthand as well. But when it comes to the late models, my grandfather already owned one because our cousin actually drove it at the time at Old Dominion. And it just it went on from there. He, he, he soon later quit before the race season started the next year when I started. And that's where it went from there. And what's your cousin's name? What was, what was his name? Davey Callahan. Okay. And, and where did he race at? He ran at Old Dominion when it was open. He actually runs at Dominion now. Okay. Okay. All right. Shout out to the cousin. Awesome. <laughs> I left you speechless. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. I can't lie. But, yeah, I mean, you know. We were supposed, to, I'll be honest with you, we were supposed to race together, and I, like I said, I don't know what happened. All I know is, you know, we had, we had two cars and one driver, <laughs> and that was me, so, uh, you know, he, that was, you know, that was his choice, but I, like I said, I, I couldn't tell you what the decision was made for, but, you know, glad to see him back racing again, and... Hopefully, we'll actually get the run against him this year up at Dominion some because we're going to run our ho- our house car, our own stuff, up there some when we have our off weekends in the car store. Awesome. Now, he was he supportive uh, when he wasn't racing and you were? He, Yeah, I mean, he wasn't around after that. It was, you know, it was just back to, back to the family. You know, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mom, just us on this side and that was it all right gotcha well cool beans all right now all right you cut your teeth you go there and you show up now who are the guys that you were racing against i understand you did go test so you didn't just show up cold turkey and they looked at you and said oh my god this 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 guy that's going to drive this huge race car is barely taller than the door panel um who were some of the guys that you raced with and uh who helped you there at southern national (coughs) well the first weekend we showed up, um, obviously Josh was there, Josh Berry, Lee, uh, Deke McCaskill, Tommy. I mean, you name it, all the big hot shops of late mall stocks. Now, even back then, even now, we're all there. I mean, Southern National was the first track to be open the first weekend in March, and that's where everyone wanted to go because that's when NASCAR points has already started. And I – Obviously, your competitors aren't going to give you too much direction to start off with because they don't want you to get ahead of them. But, it, yeah, I didn't get really much help from hardly anyone until I was you know, able to start proving myself. Then that's when, you know, you ask questions and talk to people. They would, you know, they might say something that could help you, but the majority of the time it was, you know, I was the young kid that just come in there and they weren't helping me for anything. You know, I think you, you hit on something. Um, I think racers are like that. And I think racers, no matter what you're racing, RC cars, motorcycles, um, um, mopeds, uh, snowmobiles, I think racers are like that all around the racing globe because I think if you come in and you're new or you're starting out or if people know you, people don't know you, if you come in and you can get around the track and you can prove yourself, you can hold the line, you can, you can race around people and you can let people pass you, get back in line. And then they'll start giving you some tips. If you ask, um, and that's, you know, the main thing, you know, we learned with the, the, the live show, Race 22 Radio, all you got to do is ask. You know, that's what Lee and, uh, and um, uh, Michael, all you got to do is ask. 
but the the thing is I'm getting to is is if you ask and people you know will give you a little tidbits of information but you don't do nothing with it they won't help you again am I right if you if they give you little tidbits and you apply it and they see that you can use it a little bit you know and not take advantage of what the information they're giving you they'll give you a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more because the faster you are on the track the safer it is to race with am i right in some aspects yes until you start getting Man. around them exactly 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 then that's when it becomes oh <laughs> you asked me a question that, no i mean yeah yeah you know when you're when you when you run the same speed as somebody all it takes is that little bit of knowledge right or you know, a little bit of speed in the car or just that error that you make in the same corner and you're now faxing them. Yeah. So when you ask someone a question and they already know that when that's the question you need to ask to be that, that just that much better than them. Right. I mean, they're not going to get it to you. Right. And see, you've been around long enough to know when you ask a certain question and you see their eyes kind of pop up, you know you've asked the right question, right? Of course. <laughs> That's right. Well, good. That's awesome. Uh, we're joined by Jonathan Finley out of Bristow, Virginia, talking about how he got started in late model stock car racing, jumped from the Bandoleros and raced one race with uh, many stocks, and uh, jumped right up in there in late models at 14 years old, uh, raced at Southern National Motorsports Park and for six, six or so years. And... Um, learned a lot about the race car and did it with the family his family uh outfit and he and his family worked on every piece of that race car now you guys uh now you guys didn't build your own chassis you guys um talk about the chassis and who did the motors tell me about that a little bit so when we first got started <clears throat> we had a creech car from bobby creech that is actually Ooh, I'm trying to think. He's in Ashland, Virginia, right. near Richmond. And that's what we got our, you know, that's what we started in. And then we had a old Rick Townsend lit off stock that was actually drove by Mark McFarland when he drove for Junior. So the first year we just run the Creech car and that was it. And then my second year, we ended up going with, uh, you know, Torque, what is now Torque, when Craig Oliver put a new front clip on it. Everything was updated on it. And we actually still own that car to this day, and that's what we're going to go run when we have our off time from the car store. But we run all Torque stuff. Um, our motor man was KT, Kenny Troutman. Uh, he was in the Concord area. Uh, he's no longer around now. And, yeah, we have to go all the way to Muncie, Indiana now for our motors. Muncie, Indiana, that's... Um, McGonagill. Yeah, that's a that's a good... That's some good folks up there. So, you know, move forward to now. Um, still, um, last year, raced as a uh, family outfit... Uh, jumping up in the tour. What was it uh, about the tour that attracted you, Jonathan? Uh, what uh, what made you feel like you was ready to take on the tour? Because I knew, you know, uh, being a racer and, and looking at uh, the guys that were the regulars on the tour, uh, 1 through uh, 27th, no slouches at all. So, uh, Jonathan, when you looked at the, the package that the uh, – the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour offered um, week to week to week. Uh, what what was the attraction there for you? Well, that's a difficult one because <laughs> at the time, you know, we when we run with Mike Thorne when we were at his shop and he took care of all our stuff and all the people that worked for him, um, we went and watched some of the car tour races when it was first to become a thing. And my grandfather not only said no, but that was a hell no to the car tour series. <laughs> so, 
specifically because of the same issue that we had last year. The amount of stupidity that people just don't don't think and go all for. But what made us come was someone asked us and you know, when, when sponsorship calls, you kind of have to do what they want you to do. So that's what we did. There you go. Well, that was a that was a fantastic call, and I'm glad they did because uh, uh, when you cut your teeth at late models in six years of, of mainly at the Southern National Motorsports Park um, and some of the other tracks uh, paid off because mine have had some up and down, but when the, the, the trouble stayed you know, away from you, the performance was really good, really good. Um, in some of the tracks you've never been to, um, you'd never been to Orange County before. Was, was that right? No, sir. Not before the tour. We never run Orange County. Boom! Top five finish. What finished third? Uh, the second go around when we were there. Yes, sir. We mm, finished third. There you go. And. And some of these other tracks, uh, a couple of top ten finishes. So, um, so you, you know, your grandfather had to be very proud of that. You can't say, I mean, tell me you didn't go at a dinner table, say, at the end of the year, say, Grandpa, I told you. Tell me you didn't do that. <laughs> that was more of along the lines of, I told you that was going to be a, I don't really, I'm trying to think of how to word this. <laughs> I told you that was going to be an expensive year. I <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and it, I mean, like I said, it definitely turned out to be that, especially yeah. when you talk about finishes. Yeah. yeah. Because we counted it up. Orange County, Langley, and there's one other one. We run 12, 12 or 13 races last year. We only finished two or three of them. And I mean, like, finished them without having to go home and replace body panels. Right. Other than that, it was, we might have we, we might have finished, but half the car was going to pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you finished third at Orange County, um, finished 11th at uh, Hickory, second race. You qualified really good starting out at Southern Nashville. I know you're excited about starting out there, got into trouble. Uh, finished 24th, um, qualified at ace last year, uh, eighth, and was running right there at the top five, looking for a good finish, got into somebody else's uh, trouble, finished 12th, still finished 12th um, in that race. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. But what I wanted to, to really get to before we start uh, pimping uh, this coming weekend's uh, race, uh, the the race at ace, uh, coming up at uh, a speedway this coming weekend um you know talk i really want to talk about the things that you learned at um southern national motorsports park racing those six years you know you know to share with me uh the lessons that you did learn that really helped you to get comfortable to jump into a tour like like the solid rock carriers tour <coughs> excuse me specifically just how just like each year how much Southern National changed was what baffled me from even from even when I won my track championship there in 2015 to now it, it's it's two totally different racetracks so everything you can think of from the car side to what you need to learn on how to handle the car as a driver but not only that but also run through your mind what you need for the car to make it better but what you also need to do to make it better now when I first started at Southern National it was a grippy racetrack but it was also an abusive racetrack now I know that sounds really really awkward to say because two and two really don't ever go together but for whatever reason this one did you had a lot of grip, but you could kill the tires within 20 laps with no problem. But when I started, 
I didn't start off in the greatest, like I said, the greatest equipment. It was it was really rough for me. We weren't, you know, we were running the back just about every weekend. Just it was rough, and that really taught me a lot, specifically about car control because the car would get, it, you know, it was wicked tight in the race, and then it ended up being, you know, just me trying to get everything I could get out of it. I would burn the right rear off of it and be driving the car sideways for the rest of the race. Now, obviously to most people that doesn't make sense on why we try to do that every weekend. It wasn't, we tried, it was just, we kept trying stuff. We kept trying stuff and it never worked until someone got a hold of our car and made it better. But it going there, my, you know, the biggest thing with that was, you know, they didn't want to venture out with me until I was able to show that I was ready to go somewhere else. Yeah. Who was that uh, missing piece that you, when you said got a hold of my car and made it better? Who was that missing piece? It the, back to the Mike Thorn. We, uh, my grandfather has known his dad for a long time, and my grandfather is actually the one that started the whole late mall stock scene with his cousin, Al Daly, uh, the Gore family and Bobby Darn and all them back in the early eighties at old dominion speedway when the late mall stock class come about. So are you he, saying we, that we, I'm he, old? Cause I remember that like it was yesterday. <laughs> Ooh. No, no comment. No comment. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, man! That's that's awesome. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I have to. I can't wait to talk with your grandfather about that. Uh, man, that's that's another podcast coming up. I'm I'm, I'm gonna see if I can get him to uh, do that. Uh, that's awesome. I didn't know that um, that your grandfather was part of that. That is awesome. Um, but yeah, I remember that uh, uh, being a teenager and going to the short tracks. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. But that's uh, that's cool. Um, that he was a part of that um, to help you get the, the car straightened out, and and that's that's uh, that's when it clicked, and when he came along, and the things that you learned from talking to the other drivers, and then him bringing his knowledge, that's that's when all the pieces of the puzzle started coming together for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, my grandfather was not the big setup guy. He never has been. My grandfather is the one that likes to put the car. To- Together, he minus the welding father does just about everything else. You know, he back you know in the eighties, he was the one that built the motors, um, wired the whole car. I mean, just stuff like that. He still does that to this day, but I mean, you know, minus the building the motor part, he doesn't really do that anymore. He just, quite frankly, we really don't have the time to do that but you also have to find someone that's willing to work with you for a machine shop yeah at a reasonable price so and you can't really find that anymore either <laughs> but yeah i mean you know we got we have a, a new car that he bought this year as well and you know he he'll be we'll be uh, you know, i'll be there with him uh dennis brock the guy that helps us set our stuff up here will be right there with us and you know he'll be wiring the whole car and we'll be doing whatever else just putting it back together or putting it together i should say (laughs) oh that's awesome man that is really cool and and you know you're hands-on too you're not just a driver showing up with your helmet bag uh you're not hands-on or you don't go race is that uh, one of the criteria from the grandfather and uh, in the family it's always has been. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, everybody wants me to ask, what role, uh, what's, the, what's the major piece, what role does the grandmother have? Mm. <laughs> how, do I, how, do I answer, how do I answer this without getting in trouble? Your grandmother's a rock star. Let's just get that out there. F- financial advisor. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I just love her. I, who don't? Uh, we just love her. 
Uh, everybody at Race 22 yeah. loves her. Everybody at the car store love her. Every, every, all the fans love her. Oh, she's awesome. She's a trip. <laughs> well, she's a good one, man. I always love to chat with her and I always love to see her at the racetrack. Can't wait to see her, I tell you. I um, always look forward to seeing her. She, uh, she, is, she is a sweetheart. She is a sweetheart. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she's just uh, she's just as uh, as as known as you are as the driver. So uh, that's pretty special, and it's 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 got to be really special to have someone like that in your corner uh, to make sure that you get seen and heard uh, at the racetrack. Um, and uh, you know, no matter if it's at Martinsville, if it's a NASCAR late model race, or if it's at a Cars Tour race, no matter where you're going she makes sure that you get seen and heard and a lot of drivers don't have that so that's got to be very special for you man it is i don't know whether it's seen or heard for me or seen or heard for her because <laughs> you know obviously the focus ain't on me <laughs> the focus is on her at that point <laughs> and then she'll also oh yeah i'll hear by the way there there's jonathan <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, yeah. Here, here we are doing it, talking about your grandmother. Oh yeah. By the way, we're talking with Jonathan Finley from Bar- <laughs> Bristow, Virginia, driver of the Lee Falk Racing and Development Number Four on the uh, Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour, and we're talking about good short track racing out of the uh, Race Twenty Two Production Studio, Winston Salem, North Carolina, and uh, we're talking about some racing coming up. This coming Saturday or Friday evening at the Ace Speedway. Gates open at 6.30, racing at 8. If you want to win tickets, go to the Cars Tour uh, Facebook page. And uh, they got a a particular page there. They got it at the front uh, when you log on there. And uh, I think you share it and do a comment and share it to try to win two tickets. They're going to do a giveaway randomly on June 3rd. So go to the Cars Tour for a chance to win two tickets um, for the Cars Tour race this Friday, coming up uh, this Friday at Ace on June 3rd. So go to the Cars Tour Facebook page. Jonathan, you said you uh, don't have uh, T-shirts yet to sell, to, to do, right? No, we don't. Man, we, uh... now you've seen me and Daniel um, at the racetrack. I mean, even for a big old large round guy now would you say i'm a sharp dressed guy uh, most definitely i would say that now see my haberdashery apparel outfitter is black acid apparel so if you have a race team and you want to be seen at the track black acid apparel so let me give it to you in dollars and cents you want your brand to attract potential sponsors or provide your sponsors the best representation in colors, details, and originality, contact Black Acid Apparel on Facebook. Just look them up on Facebook. You can see all their samples and some of their other customers and colors and detail right there on Facebook. Black Acid Apparel. Got you. Is that your fans calling you? Yeah, her name's Debbie. <laughs> she's making sure you're taking the call from Race 22 Productions. That's what she's doing. Yeah, well, she can wait. <laughs> Tell you have a bigger name on the other line. <laughs> she's actually going to Roanoke today with my grandfather, so... Oh, they they out uh, courting? My aunt moved to Roanoke. Okay. So that's that, that's where they're heading. Ah, gotcha. So I, I I got left duties of talk to you this morning and then go finish the car so we can go test on test tomorrow. Ah, so you touched on that. Uh, today is Saturday the thirtieth. So going to test at uh, uh, Dominion. What's it called now? Um, Dominion Raceway. Dominion Raceway. Gonna. Take the the house car um, that you guys are going to test on the off weekends, so the fans will be happy to hear about that. So hopefully that'll go well, and um, so I know you'll be glad to get back in the race car to get back to some sort of normalcy. Everybody wants to be back to normalcy. Yeah, but it's 
it's hard when you have all these restrictions they, they, they keep trying to implement against you. And, you know, it's been so long that I think everyone's just fed up with it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we can have our own show on, you know, what, you know, we've talked about that. So let's let the, the other folks, you know, that's a, that's a whole show for another day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, let, you know, speaking about the cars tour and, Lee Falk Racing and Development. Now, if you do any research at all, Lee Falk Racing and Development, Michael and Lee have got a fantastic outfit that, uh, you know, when mom and dad, dad, little Johnny wants to go racing, but they don't have the first inkling on what to do, but they got a little cash. They do a little research and say, hey, look at this. These folks have got a racing program. They can, you know, take little Johnny, sit down with Mr. Falk and and, and Michael, Mr. Junior Falk. <laughs> Hate I had to say that, but they'll get a kick <laughs> out of that. Um, and little Johnny go to the shop and work first, learn about the race car, earn his way to the seat, not just hand over cash to go race and go racing. Now, let's enter... Mr. Jonathan Finley from Bristow, Virginia, who's raced for seven years in a late model stock car. And they put this program together to go racing together. Now, that's totally different from both sides of the fence for this program. So somebody needs to explain to me, and I'm so excited that both parties are racing, because when I was ringing Miss Deborah's phone coming late in the year because I was trying to find out what you were doing, you know, coming up for 2020. And I, she said, I don't know. It ain't looking good. I think we're just going to race local. And I thought, man, you had a lot of momentum. So the performance was good. Maybe not the finishes you always wanted, but the performance was good. She said, I don't know. We're on the fence. We don't know what we're going to do. Maybe local. And I was disappointed, but I was glad to hear you were still racing. Okay. Then all of a sudden, boom, this big announcement. And I called her. She said, I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell you. I had, you know, I had to keep secrecy because of Tanya, you know, and she told me not to tell, blah, 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 blah. And, but I was so happy that you made the announcement. Now, tell me how this came to be, the connection with you and Lee Falk Racing Development. I am so thrilled for both parties, but it's so different because you're not a greenhorn by no means. And it's such a different uh, connection uh, for them and you to, to have you in their car. So talk about how this came to be and talk about uh, the relationship for you guys. So we've known Lee and Michael for, you know, four, three, four years now through race, the racing world. And it was a quick deal. And I mean, it was talk on Monday, talk on Tuesday. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Everything was done on Wednesday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's why none of you guys really knew about it because we were actually trying to get our personal stuff ready again. We were going to run the first Cars Tour race at Southern National, select a few of what we could do then, and then after that, it was just pick and choose on what we wanted to do. You know, Leaf Hawk Racing was specifically for the tour with them. Okay, so that that is their car. I, I didn't know if, if they had your car prepping it or, or if you're going to their shop to, to fix it or what. So that's their car, and you're driving for them? Yes, sir. That's awesome. How cool is that to show up at the track and then go? Or are you going to the shop and, and working with them, or uh, what's the relationship there? I mean, I'd like to, but, you know, I work a full-time job, so... I can't. I don't. You know, I don't have any time unless it's on the weekends. And obviously, they, I'm not the only one that drives for them. So, my, you know, if I was to go there, it would be go help them or go hang out with them. You know, at another racetrack. So, I have not gone to the shop. I've been to their shop once or twice. I don't remember. I'm trying to think, the last time I was there, it was a while. <laughs> but, you know, it. Like I said, I work a full-time job, so I can't really do that. So it's more or less something that I've never, ever had in my years of racing. I show up with my helmet my you know, and everything I need. 
and I don't have really anything to worry about when it comes, you know, when the car leaves the track because that, you know, that is their job. That's what, you know, that's what they do is, you know, put a race car together that can perform. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've never, I've never really had that in my life to have the availability just to not, you know, come back home and not have to worry about, Oh, well we need to tear this whole thing apart and rebuild it because it's destroyed. <laughs> How's that feel? Never. It's different. <laughs> it's not. I don't, I don't know whether to say it's a fun feeling or it's just it, more than anything. It's not the same. I mean, I you know, I try to find everything I can help on, especially at the racetrack. But you know, they have people there, and that's their job. So you know, but you know, the first race of Southern National, I got told to go find something to do because I was in the way. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, That's awesome. I'm, I'm never taught, you know, obviously when it's just me and my grandfather and whoever else is helping us, I'm never told that because it's, <laughs> you know, we have limited people. Yeah. So you got to do being it. told that. I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was more nerve irking than it was anything because like I said, I've never been told that and I've never, I've never had that until now. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, you know, it's, it's, You've earned it. I mean, you've raced hard and you've worked hard. Um, and you know, and it, I don't think it was handed to you. Um, I think those guys. Uh, you know, I haven't talked to them, but I I kind of felt like uh, they felt like you've earned it. They they wouldn't uh, have offered. They wouldn't have agreed to it if they felt like you didn't earn it. I think I've known them well. You know, gotten to know them well enough that uh, they felt like you've earned it. And I think they think they know you do them a well a, a, a really good job. I think it's a good fit. Um, now, you know they, uh, you know they've been they've been around a long time and they offer some really good stuff. Now, um, are there is there anything that you've learned from them by working with them and being there with them and watching them the way they're doing with the the young people at the, you know, working on the car and and being at the race shop with them a couple of times and and watching how they do things at the track. Or, you know, what do you learn from them? They're very direct. And by that I mean, they ask you to do something and you don't do it. They're gonna they're gonna pound it into your head until you do. I like that. But that's but that's that's how it should be. Yeah. If you're making a mistake and they can see that, that's you know that's supposed to help you. And if you're not, you know, obviously if you're not fixing whatever you're doing or doing it how they, you know, they're asking you to do, then obviously you know they have you know. That's that's their right to say, hey, this is what you need to do. Yeah, because I'm gonna now, enter, I'm gonna enter a reality check right now, ladies and gentlemen, because that's the way the real world is. If you want to be in racing and you're working, you know, trying to work your way up to the cup level as a mechanic, because you couldn't make it as a driver, and you're working on something in the shop and you don't get it done, and you get corrected and you don't do it right, guess what? You're packing your stuff quickly. They will get rid of you. And you talk back, you're gone. They will get rid of you quickly. And that's why Michael and Lee teach this method. If you've never been in the military, you don't get it. You don't. So you better learn that this is the way it's done. So don't get offended if you hear them kind of speaking directly quickly sounds kind of ugly but it's for a reason it's for a purpose and it's not for them just being mean it's not because they're bossy it's not because they're jerks because that's the way the real world is am i right you are 100 percent. thank you sir that's just the way it is and some people just don't get it Okay, go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, I had to insert just a little bit of reality there for some folks. Yeah, I mean that's that's just part of life. I mean, it's, but when it comes to the racing side, you know, everyone goes out there for the same for the same task, go to go win. And if you're doing something wrong that you you know that you could, that you need to change, that you know obviously can help you 
on the racetrack, become faster, whatever, helps the car, then you, you, you've got to do it. It's just, it's, just a, it's just as simple as that. Yep. Yep, because um, the guys that are there giving the directions and and showing you know what's to be done is because they've been there, done that, and they know what they're talking about. So that's just the way it is. And, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I, I've been in the military, and that's the way my mind works. So I know. That's the way. That's the way it is. It's like I was told <laughs> many, many times. Uh, you know, do like I told you. Uh, we, we, I don't care about your feelings right now. Uh, we can talk about how we don't care about your feelings later. But go ahead and do what I told you right now. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's just like you know, like you said earlier. That's just life in general. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean. If if you can't get over it, then that's on you. But when it comes to the racing world, you better get over it real quick. Yeah, you got to have a short memory. Swallow, swallow your pride and yeah. do what they ask. Yeah, I think you got a good head on your shoulders, and and um, you you got to put things like that, especially when things don't go your way at the racetrack or after a a particular race or situation with another driver. You know, you as a driver, you got to put those behind you as well, and and that's something you got to learn along the way too. Is that right? You make a good point, and yes, that is right. And that's going to that. That's 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 funny. We I'm glad you said that because we Lee and Michael, like I said, they've known me for three or four years now. When it comes to the racing world, me personally, when someone does something, and it typically involves me getting wrecked or whatever it may be, I have a really bad temper. No. I just have a bad temper in general. No, and yeah i know me no <laughs> never and that was actually the first thing the first time i ever went and tested one of their cars that was the thing they said to me you don't do you don't talk we do the talking we do the fighting whatever it may be you just stay over there and drive the car and that was it i, I think they now, mean that too just just a hunch <laughs> That, that's a that's a bold statement. That's a bold statement. Yeah, yeah, it is. Maybe maybe we should call Michael and get him in here and ask him that question. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I obviously I'm not gonna like it when someone tears our own stuff up. Right. Let alone the people that I drive for. So. It's going to take a lot for me. Like, if we ever have I, – I don't want those situations this year. I, that's, <laughs> that's that's in the past. I hope those are missed situations are in the past. But, you know, if it comes down to that, that's, that's the hard – hard one I'm going to have to swallow is get out of the car and just, just turn my head down and go somewhere so, so I don't say something I shouldn't. Right. Because yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. obviously last year – there's a couple times they interviewed me after I got wrecked, and I probably said some stuff that I shouldn't have. But hey, when you're when you're running when you're running the stuff, and that that's the big thing, you know, you're 14, 15, 16 years old, running with, you know, I'm 21, and then uh, you know, obviously the other people, you know, people like Lee and Deke and all of them are obviously older than me. You know, that's that's what you get. If you can't handle someone coming at you and talking to you about it, then don't do it. Yeah, there's a lesson to be learned. You know, some of the young racers listening, um, you know, and, and Jonathan's been through that, and it's a learning curve, and that's something that you got to learn. you got to go through it to learn it, and you're going to make mistakes along the way. Um, I'm telling you, in, in life in general, uh, I've been there, done that, made a lot of mistakes. I said a lot of crazy stuff uh, along the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, with me – that's the thing that I don't know. I don't get too many people to come at me and talk to me about that anymore. Cause I'm the type to not back down. Even when I was younger, like I said, even when I was 14, 15, 16, whatever, if I did something wrong or something wrong happened on the racetrack and obviously we don't know whose fault it is, whatever you want to say, 
It's just part of racing. Yep. I was, you know, if they decided they wanted to come over and scream and yell and have a nice chit chat with me, I am not the type to take any BS from anybody. If you want to come scream, yell at me and come get in my face, I'm going to give it right back to you. Period. Right. You can come over and we can have a nice talk and, see, and you know, see where we think things went wrong, but don't don't bring your attitude over to me and expect you're not going to get one back. <laughs> right. I mean, that's to be expected. That's just, how, that's, that's just how it is. That's how it is in general. That's how it is with life. Yeah. But when it comes to racing... <laughs> Obviously, you tear someone's car up, and it's going to make it's going to escalate it a little more. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and you know because there's a financial aspect that come with that, and that's the first thing that comes to your mind is I got to fix this, I got to repair this, I got to pay for this. You know, how am I going to get to the race the next time? How am I? You know, I'm losing points, which means I'm losing money at the end of the year. All that comes to your mind in a split second, and man, that skyrockets your blood pressure, and and that gets in the way of your thought process and and your rationale and your filters. <laughs> And um, yeah, absolutely. And and your passion—that's that's where that comes from. And and I I think that's awesome to 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 hear that you know Michael and and Lee teach that. That's part of the the teaching process. And 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 they mean that. So and that's awesome. So so now in your career, as we we look ahead at uh, the Ace Speedway coming up this weekend for the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour, um, the race at Ace One Twenty Five presented by LessExpensiveCars.com. Coming up this Friday, June fifth, at Ace Speedway, gates open at six thirty. Racing at eight. Um, what uh, you know, as we as we look ahead, second full year in the the the, the tour, and and you know, off to a pretty yeah. solid start. You know, what are some of your uh, goals in, in racing? I mean, um, you want to stick? You know, are you looking ahead, or are you just focused on where you're at right now? Or, you know, what are some of your goals in 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 racing, like you, you hit you hit on a hit, on a hit a spot earlier. Financial aspects, for, like you said, for everyone that listens to this, financial aspects, anything you do in life, is a big key. Now, if you want to keep moving up and up and up, you better have that big financial checkbook. But as that goes with anything, you know, it's just, it's part of it. Now, my goal at this point is to perform and prove to people that I do belong in this sport of racing. But at the same time, you know, I'm not going to take anything for granted for what I get. I'm going to take it each weekend that we're at the racetrack and just keep going on there. And what happens is what happens. Now, my goals for this year specifically, obviously one is get back to the racetrack. <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, just in general, um, realistically speaking, top box every weekend. Lee and Falk put a car together that I know can do it. I know I can do it. It's just, you know, everything has to, two and two have to go together. And if you don't, then, you know, it, it's, usually it's not a pleasant weekend. But I want to win. It's been so long. It, it, it really has. I think my last win was, Mm, 2017. Oh goodness, yeah, we got we got to fix that. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's been way too long. Oh my goodness, the part you know, since it's been that long. So when you hit victory lane this year, uh, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna call my shot right now. When uh, you put that Lee Falk Racing and Development number four in victory lane uh, for the Solid Rock Carriers Tour, uh, no matter where it's at. Boy, the party your grandmother's going to throw. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Oh, you won't have to worry about my grandmother throwing it because uh, 
the Falk clan definitely knows how to throw one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Tanya, don't forget about Tanya. Let's let's throw her uh, some uh, some good pub out there. Yeah, she uh, she represents you very well. And and before we let you uh, go, you know, before, before we get done, we'll uh, talk about all the folks that uh, support you there. Tanya does a fine job uh, of getting you out there and. Um, Oh yeah, she'll be ex- she'll she'll be excited as well because you have a great relationship with her and and her uh, company there representing you as well. But uh, but looking ahead uh, at the the remaining schedule, um, of course Ace this coming weekend you got Hickory coming up. Uh, I know you're looking forward to going to to Ace or uh, to uh, Orange County to finish third. Uh, what else uh, on the schedule uh, is really pumping up at you other than looking at the money race late in the year? Uh, of course, that is at Orange County. I know you're really hoping to have another good performance there, but looking at the, the schedule, what is popping out at you that you're hoping to return to either um, rebound from a, a poor performance last year that you think you should have performed better or what's a track that has kind of stumbled you that you're hoping to, to conquer? What's... What on the schedule that is you really uh, looking to to conquer this year? Conquer <laughs> Carteret County. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Carteret County. That was by far the worst track. That you know, one of the tracks that we were on the worst at last year. Uh, it. I don't know. It was just hard. It was hard to get a handle. We never really got a good handle on the car. It was. It was out there. It run terrible. I mean, we just, I don't know. Like I said, it, it's hard to wrap your head around it because we can never get our hands on it. But Carteret, Conquer, I would definitely say one of the tracks that I circle is obviously, my, you know, close to home for me is Dominion. Right. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of family that come out to that. And that's just one of the ones that I want to do good at because there's so many people that come watch me in person. Yeah, yeah. You want to do good in front of the the folks there that are you know possibly watching, but when they're the, in the stands, they're cheering for you. Yeah, you definitely want to want to want to do well in front of you. And you you, you know the performance was there last year, you qualified top ten. Um, so you definitely want to uh, step it up and and qualify good, but you also want that finish uh, uh, for sure uh, in front of the fans. So that's for sure. So hopefully by that point. Um, we can get back the series can get back to having the um the fan fest so the the fans that can come down and, and see you and see the the good looking race car there that uh, they can uh, the lee falk racing development puts on the racetrack for you because man do they put together a pretty race car or what that that they definitely do they're uh both of them remind me a lot of my grandfather when it comes to that car has to look look good to be good that i mean that's that's the motto and i mean my grand like i said my grandfather is the same way it's you know our cars finally got put back together after oh lord it's been months we've been working on that thing slowly but surely and it looks like a dust bunny (laughs) so he you know he he called. He you know he called me last night, and that's why I was coming out. And obviously, I had stuff I had to go do, and I told him to come out and do it today. Well, obviously, he's not there today, so he <laughs> he went to Roanoke with my grandmother. So, in order to go test tomorrow, he said if the car looks like a dust bunny, it ain't happening. So he ain't gonna have it. So what? you got no. you got some work to do. That yeah, a lot. <laughs> Every speck on that car, every inch you can think of has a piece of dust on it. Every inch. Well, you got some work to do, brother. That's for sure. <laughs> so you guys be at the uh, the track practicing Friday or a Thursday? I keep thinking. I keep forgetting. It's been so long since I've done the routine. It's a Friday race coming up, June 5th. So you guys be there Thursday practicing? Yes, sir. Cool beans. Cool beans. That we will. I don't know if I'll be there Thursday. I might, uh, I don't know. It'd be cool if me and Daniel show up there Thursday and uh, bring the grill. Cook. Hey, that works for me. I'm, try- I'm trying to, <laughs> I keep tra- telling them, I keep telling my mom I'm going to take her RV. Yeah. That'd be, there you go. Uh, she's, she's not, she's not having that though. 
when it comes when it, when it comes out of my mouth, mom, I'm taking your RV. No, you're not. <laughs> she already put the now if it comes out of, now if it comes out of my grandfather's mouth, <laughs> hey, we're we're taking your RV to the racetrack this weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, really? Funny. Really? Is that, 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 that's how you're going to be? <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, we sure do appreciate you spending some time with us before you got some work to do, before you go testing uh, on a Sunday uh, after church. And hopefully everybody is uh, pleased. I don't know about Virginia, but in the Carolinas, we, am, we finally get to go back to the house of the Lord and get to uh, worship uh, in church. So I'm so excited about that. Um Appreciate you spending some time with us in the Race 22 production studio down here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Talking about the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour race coming up this Friday at the Ace Speedway. Gates open at 6.30 p.m. Racing starts at Ace. Don't forget to go to the Cars Tour Facebook page and uh, look for the uh, the post about uh, winning two tickets. You know, uh, send, Write a post on there. Share it. They'll be uh, selecting randomly on June 3rd for a ticket giveaway. So go to the Cars Tour uh, Facebook page, and they will do a ticket giveaway. The throwback at Hickory. Do we know, looking ahead, my man, what's going to be your throwback? Can you release that now? Can we break news right here today before the Ace uh, Speedway race for the Solid Rock Carriers Tour uh, race at Ace? Can you release that right now? Um, house call with Doc Love with Jonathan Finley. Do you know? Uh, we actually don't. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a tough one. I, I, you know, my grandfather. My grandfather never truly raced. He, he, you know, he did a couple races in his past. But like I said, I don't really know what we're gonna do for that just yet. But in all honesty. I don't know. I don't really want this to be out there because <laughs> of what I want to do. Uh-oh. What I want to do and what he's probably going to want to do are two totally different things. Oh, imagine that. Because well, last year, <laughs> um, last year he he kind of chose what we did, which I didn't have an issue with it because I thought it looked really cool. Was the old Texaco Davy Allison theme? Oh yeah, yeah. Um. That was that yeah. was cool. That was I really that sharp. One. Yes, that's right. It was really sharp. Yes. And like, I don't know. I would like to do something. Yeah. In tribute of my grandfather specifically because, just like I said, how many how long he's been in racing. Yeah. But obviously, you know he's. All right. Here's when it comes a, to here's an idea, and you know you don't give it away if I'm on to something here. Um. What was the paint scheme of the very first late model that that hit the track? You talking about one he built? Bingo. Okay. There you go. Um, um, I've thought about that, but uh, <laughs> I've also thought about his favorite. There you go. One, and I was like, well. I mean, the, the first one he built was really nice. The second one, I don't know. The second one was kind of plain Jane, but it was also it was also his favorite car that he built. Yeah, when he did it. So that's awesome. Or know. you know, here's here's an idea. Uh, your grandmother might get a kick out of this. You know how you can take a picture and then send it to the company that puts that picture on socks. You mm-hmm. can take a picture of him and the grandmother and make a wrap of it and put it on the car. Oh boy! <laughs> I, I I always mess with them when it comes to stuff like that because obviously, like I said, you know we have we do have people that help us out sponsorship wise. Yeah. Yes, that is we do. But when it comes to that aspect, it, my grandparents are the ones realistically. Yeah. The very few that you know, give everything to our racing. And if it wasn't for them, I mean, I, I obviously wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, they've been there since day one, and, and I know it's a family 
uh, racing, you know, families that race together stay together. And I just love your family. They're absolutely wonderful to be around. I just love your grandmother. Love your entire family. I know we pick on your grandmother, and she picks back, and she, I just love her at the racetrack. I mean, who don't? Uh, she's she she makes it so much fun to be at the racetrack, and even on my bet my worst day when I'm having a hard day or uh, feeling bad uh, trying to get around the racetrack to, to make sure I get all the stories, uh, she just makes no matter what pain I'm having or whatever, she just makes it all go away. She just makes life good. And I, and I think I, I'm not the only one that feels that way. Uh, she is, yeah, uh, redheads over here, absolutely just shaking her head, saying absolutely. You know, she, uh, she's here in the studio yeah, with uh, me. She, uh, I'm sure she, I'm not the only one telling you that. So she is a very special lady, and uh, she touch, she touches a lot of people's lives in a very positive way. And then uh, she's very special, and I think you do too, Jonathan. I think uh, in your own way, uh, the way you, you you handle your business, and the way you approach uh, racing, um, I think you you know I don't I don't know. It's hard. Let's see. Let me see if I can put it to words. Um, you, you're you're a no nonsense kind of person, the way I view uh, you, and I and I think that's a good thing. You know, I, I'm that way to a certain point. I use a lot of humor. Um, but uh, I also approach when it's time to work in a no nonsense kind of way, um, and I and I view you like that, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good trait, um, and I think you're a very hands on and have been from a young age, and I think you know every inch of that race car, and that is a very good thing, and um, and I I think you'll go as far as you want to go in this sport, and you talked about the folks that have helped you out in this sport before we let you go jonathan uh talk about the the folks that have helped you uh financially and, and support and the sponsorship uh with your racing you know with the lee falk racing development and with your family car that you're going to race on the off time with the solid rock carriers uh, cars tour yeah first off my grandparents as a lot of people know if it wasn't for them i i, I, I wouldn't be doing it it's just, it's as simple as that. I, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, second, my mom. Um, I live with, currently still live with my mom. You know, when it comes to the financial aspect, she hasn't always, you know, been all about that. But last year, she, uh, it got really rough for my grandparents financially and you know, my mom actually stepped in so we could finish our season so like I said that's another story my grand, you know my grandfather uh, ended up having to find another job and that's that's where that whole up in the air about what we we're going to do this year was all about so that's that um we're all good now. We're back at it. And, yeah, like you said, my grandparents, my mom, uh, Tanya. Don't really know <laughs> where we would honestly be. I would probably still be doing all local stuff if it wasn't for her, too. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't be racing much. I'd be doing, you know, what I can. But, yeah, if it wasn't for her definitely wouldn't be racing either and just everyone that supports me mm, and, and yeah. tanya's um what is it mpm is that M mpm marketing right there you go and it, just everyone that's helped me out to get where i am now you know racing is has its ups and downs a lot of them are downs <laughs> that that's for sure the only you know and then you know you just you, you run into you run into certain situations that you have to get away from. It's it's just part of it. But like I said, if it wasn't for my grandparents, I, you, you know you know we probably wouldn't even be talking right now. Well, I hear you, big guy, and it's awesome. I'm glad things have worked out, and really glad you got hooked up with. Uh... Lee Falk Racing Development, Lee and Michael, uh, 
have an outstanding program, and uh, I know they provide an outstanding race car for you for the Solid Rock Carriers Tour. And uh, speaking of that, don't forget, this Friday, Solid Rock Carriers Tour is on the racetrack. Gates open for the fans at 6.30. Racing start at 8 o'clock. So don't forget, that's Ace Speedway this Friday. Gates open at 6.30. Racing starts at 8. Ace Speedway, Altima Hall. Uh, been racing for 60 years. Not all of it on asphalt. That used to be a dirt track. Yeah, I'm, you can tell I'm old. I remember. Uh, the race at Ace 125 presented by LessExpensiveCars.com. And I know you're looking forward to that. That track, do you think that track owes you one? Um, <laughs> yeah. can't lie. I just, after, there's a lot of tracks that owe me one. <laughs> that we go to this year, but that, that's beside the point. It is what it is. It's yeah. just part of it. Hello. I must be going. I cannot stay. I Thank you for stay. clicking on House Call with Doc Love on Race22.com. Presented by Black Acid Apparel. To look your best, be sure to get hooked up with Black Acid Apparel on Facebook. Black Acid Apparel. Until next time, we'll see you at the races. I must be.